Welcome to the Friday vlog. Welcome to the Friday vlog. And today we're going to be talking about presence and how it's important for relationships. I like presents. <laughs> Big mean? ones, little ones. <laughs> Father's Day presents, birthday presents, Christmas presents, <laughs> random presents. Do I not give you enough presents? Oh, I'd like more presents in my life. That wasn't actually the kind of presents I, that I was talking okay, about. Okay. So, You're talking about what presents were you talking about? I was talking about being in the now uh, kind of that presents. presents. Okay. Do you like that too? Uh, yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as real as other kind. <laughs> Duly noted that you want more presents. Yes. Okay. Presents all round. And Father's Day is coming up. It is. Not long. Gosh, yeah. the years flying by already. So, in terms of presents and about being in the now in relationship, it is something that is really helpful for building rapport, allowing for intimacy to be in place. It feels. Um, respectful to the other person. I know that I have been accused of not being present, um, most particularly by our eldest daughter. Those um, accusations have come up, and she's been accurate when she said it. I have been um, oftentimes feeling attacked, and so I haven't felt very in my body at those moments. But when I'm able to be in the now, whether it's with you or in any other relationship, there is a capacity to really hear the other person and to really connect in a beautiful way and so often in work with clients they're asking for techniques around communication what are the best communication techniques that you can give me and ultimately what I say to them is that really it's not so much a technique but is um, being able to be present in the moment and listening like that's the best thing you can do in terms of communication yeah um what comes to mind in me listening to you <laughs> and being present <laughs> is that sort of old personal growth adage feel the fear and do it anyway yeah because i was thinking as you were talking about your relationship with your eldest daughter our eldest daughter mm -hmm. that you're probably afraid of letting down your defenses it's like something in your mind feels like something needs to be taken care of so you go into analysis rather than kind of being present and listening to what they're saying so for me it's kind of interesting to reflect on how fear comes up the fear of whatever thing is going to come into being or fear of something that hasn't even happened yet kind of takes us out of the present moment and it's the present moment where we have to be in communication with this person that's in front of us so it is a case of kind of feeling the fear and being present to what is rather than trying to imagine what could unfold that won't be to our liking that we have to defend ourselves from so that's somewhere that's a way that I take myself out of the game and start being present yeah I think that there can be so many trains of thought that we get caught up in it might be like you're saying it might be some kind of fear it could be a to-do list it might be um just uh, any kind of analytical thinking going on takes us out of the present moment or oh, this is just a really boring conversation and i just need to entertain myself in some other way <laughs> is that, are you familiar that's not with how that? I, that's not no that's never going on with you but i mean i think that's something that happens for people too yeah they just just go off on a different tangent of thought or just go off on a journey of thought that's nothing to do with the present moment well yeah that can happen someone can say something and it can spark a whole train of thinking and then before you know it they, you know half the conversation has right. gone by and you missed it and i guess the person who's experiencing that just feels the feels abandoned and rightly so and however good we may feel we are at uh, pulling the wool over someone else's eyes they're always getting a sense of what's going on they're just not here they're not present <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the amazing things that we have as human beings is that I think that's your phone beeping I don't think it's my phone it's not my phone I'm sure I turned my phone off <laughs> something's beeping well we can edit that out so one of the amazing things that we have as human beings is the ability to recognize whether somebody's present or not we can feel it and we might not be consciously aware of it but on some level we know if someone's listening to us or not and if we care enough, we're probably going to notice it and uh, comment on it. So one of the best things that we can do for a relationship in terms of building rapport, building intimacy, increasing goodwill between two people is simply just to be present. And it really is something that we all know how to do. It's not something that we need to learn. We're just talking about being in the now 
and not listening to the inner narrator, listening to the person, and then listening to our own wisdom or common sense or natural response that comes up in the process of being present with them. Yeah, it does feel like, um, you know, I feel like this is my journey for sure, not only in relationship, but just for life in general and for the work that I do. And in the work that I do, in having to listen to someone, there are moments where my mind takes me off on a tangent. My mind suddenly says, oh, that's interesting, and I want to go off and explore that thought. Or they've said something that uh, activates something within me. It's very easy to sort of find myself drifting off into my my analytical machinery, as it were. And so I have to pull myself back. I have to be conscious about pulling myself back. And I find myself doing that right across the board. Obviously, in my work, it's something that I have to really focus on. Um, or hopefully do naturally, as the case may be. <laughs> it's not like I want to feel like that's something that's a problem for me, but it's something that I've taught myself to do better. And I think I can teach myself to do it better in relationship too. It's like when my mind is not engage with what's in front of me in this moment, in this now. Um, I'm becoming more increasingly aware that my mind is elsewhere and that chances are you're picking that up too and that's not helpful for our connection or communication. And I know in the early days of our relationship you would get really infuriated with me because you would constantly tell me I'm not listening and I'm saying, of course I am, I'm listening, I'm all ears. And really, I wasn't. I was off in my mind. But there was no evidence that you could put on the table that could on the table that would prove that I was off somewhere else. I know. Because, it's so intangible. Well, obviously, I think probably from your schooling, you learn how to be able to repeat the facts while not being present. Because <laughs> right. you could repeat the facts of the conversation to me, even though you hadn't been present with me. I could. I could. So you've been listening and retaining <laughs> while off with whatever, and I could feel it. Right. Yeah. So 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 we pick up all those things. Mm -hmm. We pick up those cues or, or, or lack of, whatever it is. Uh, and it's something to be cognizant of. And that's where a relationship a lot of time goes south. Yeah. And it's not that we have to be present with our partner all the time. We can say, I've got things to do. I've got something on my mind. I can't listen right now. And that's what I've got better at doing with our eldest daughter is saying, you know, you're interrupting me in the middle of my work day. I'm sorry. I can't listen to you right now because what I would try and do is, um, you know, listen to her while, you know, figuring things out that I was in the middle of because I'd just been interrupted. And so now I've just got better at saying, I'm sorry, I'm not available right now. Give me 15 minutes or I can talk to you at the end of the day or I've got a session coming up. I can talk to you after the session. And so it's not that we have to be constantly um, available to our partners in this way, but we can, when we are wanting to be, actually be present and not um, thinking about something else. And the other piece that is there when we're present with another person is we're also present with ourselves, And it feels good. Yeah. And it feels really good. Yeah. Or we can just be completely transparent and apologize. I just, you know, I'm sorry. I just lost my train of thought. Yeah. I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Like when the uh, phone dinged and I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like I lost my train of thought. You did. My mind went to the phone. It went to saying, I asked you to turn your phone off before we started. Why didn't you turn the phone off before we started? <laughs> yeah. The phone is digging and then I couldn't remember what so I was saying. So that's just something you have to practice getting better at. Yes. <laughs> and not taking it personally and allowing yourself to go on some sort of judgmental train of thought. <laughs> but will you also turn your phone off? <laughs> yes, I will endeavor to get better at that. <laughs> Yes. So that was an example of me not it being was. present. It was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we gave you a real-time, real-life example of how that looks in our household <laughs> and that we can get back on track yes. and be present with each exactly. other. Exactly. We can always get back on track. Yes, that's important. So, And even if it's a habit, like Angus is saying, we can um, break habits. We can get better at uh, recognizing when we're here in the now and when we're not. And as I was saying, it's it's great for our relationship, it's great for our partner, it's great for us. It feels so much better to be in the now. There's so much uh, less internal stress when we're not spending so much ener energy in our intellect. Yeah, so in a sense, it's like I had a, a habit around not listening very well, and I've created a new habit around listening well, but it's about awareness, an awareness that 
this is how I don't listen very well. Mm -hmm. I don't listen very well because I'm actually, I'm actually listening very well because I'm listening to the chatter in my head <laughs> rather than the person that's in front of me. So it's, 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 a, it's kind of a case of selective listening, but I am listening. I'm just not listening to, the, to the, what I should be listening to. <laughs> As the case may be. Um, I guess that when I, we were at the beginning of our relationship, your chatter was more interesting than I was. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> you were well, feeling jealous. I was feeling jealous of the chatter you, in your head. You were in a jealous rage. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? Exactly. Well, hopefully this reminder about the importance of being in the now, the importance of being present is helpful to you in terms of developing that deeper connection, love and intimacy with your partner and recognizing that you have everything you need to be present. You don't need to learn anything. There isn't anything um, that needs to be done. Angus is talking about becoming a better listener, but in a sense, it's not that he has to learn something new. He just has to stop the habits of not listening. So it's, it's not like another skill is needed. So hopefully you found this helpful. I hope so too. Have a great weekend. Bye.